Welcome back to the Jake Beckett Show podcast. I'm your host, Jake Beckett, back in the house for another great episode for you this week. I've got a good one. It's uh, a little bit of the news of the day, um, taking a break from the Great Men of History series and my last podcast on starting strength and what it means to get strong, get fit. If you haven't caught up on those episodes quite yet, go back and listen. But today's episode is in direct response to uh, a recent federal court decision in the Western District of Texas, which said that Governor Greg Abbott's um, Operation Lone Star, um, which seeks to set up barriers in the Rio Grande River uh, and you know, at least trying to pretend uh, that he is doing something to stop the invasion of illegal immigrants across our southern border, uh, this judge, um, this judge's name is Judge David Ezra, a Reagan appointee, Uh, He recently ruled that uh, Greg Abbott's efforts to stop this invasion are illegal. Now, I'm going to get into this. Uh, I'm going to get into why he did that. I'm going to get into Greg Abbott's response. And then I'm going to give what I would do uh, if if I were in Governor Greg Abbott's position and how the right needs to learn from the left uh, and start ignoring federal law, uh, nullifying federal law, and ignoring federal court rulings uh, if we're going to have any hope of, of creating um, a space where we have sovereignty, uh, a place worth living, uh, that's the real Rubicon uh, that has not been crossed yet. And that's the, that's the title of today's episode, The Rubicon No One Will Cross. Now, you hear a lot of chatter these days, especially from conservative commentators, about oh, this another Rubicon moment. You know, I like to joke on Twitter, uh, promo code Rubicon. It's all grift. It's all everyone's just trying to... Um, you know, get some Elon bucks, some engagement on Twitter. But of course, it goes nowhere because our movement um, is designed to go nowhere. But as always, I'm going to cut through the noise uh, and I'm going to give you uh, what really should be done. Uh, So obviously, if you're not familiar, the Rubicon, the crossing of the Rubicon, that metaphor comes from uh, Julius Caesar crossing uh, the small stream in northern Italy uh, on his way to uh, launch his civil war, his eventual takeover of the Roman government, which of course led to uh, the abolition of the Roman Republic and the eventual founding of the Roman Empire under his nephew and heir, Caesar Augustus. Um, so the, the reason why um, these these are all kind of fake Rubicon moments, you know, obviously it's, it's awful what's happening to President Trump, all the indictments. I mean, in, in some ways we are in uncharted territory in American political history. But these really aren't real Rubicon moments because, as, as you all know from my Julius Caesar episode, the, the nature of crossing the Rubicon uh, means that there is no turning back. That's really what it means. You know, as, as Caesar himself said when he crossed the Rubicon, Ilia Yacta Est, the die is cast. You can't unring the bell. Once you cross the Rubicon, there is no turning back. So all these fake Rubicon moments, I mean, they're not real Rubicon moments. Life goes on. Nothing really has changed politically uh, in, in terms of the political system. But I, I will, and the, the, point, the point of this podcast is to, to, um, to elaborate on what really would be a Rubicon moment on the right and what we need to do. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, Oren McIntyre, I'm kind of borrowing his phrase, um, you know, we do a lot of swimming in the Rubicon or fishing in the Rubicon, which really is not advisable. You either cross the Rubicon or you don't. Uh, that's been a big problem for the right over the years is that we do a really good job of antagonizing the left and whipping up opposition, uh, you know, making them think that they're in mortal danger, but really we're not serious. They take us seriously. Uh, they're able to fundraise. They're able to mo- mobilize and motivate their base off of these swimming in the Rubicon moments uh, coming from the right, but really it doesn't materialize. It's really the worst of both worlds because we're not serious, and it really motivates uh, our opposition. So uh, swimming or fishing in the Rubicon is not advisable, but I will make a case for why the, 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 the right really does need a Rubicon moment, and it has to come from red state leaders, red state governors. You know, I, I put red state in quotes because, as we know, we really don't have red states. We have, um, we have subject kind of conquered colonies, um, that have a little bit of autonomy, you know, red states can tinker around with, with policy and they can lower and raise taxes. And, you know, the, the, the regime gives red states a little bit of autonomy, 
But at the end of the day, if you fly too close to the sun, like Greg Abbott was trying to do and like some other red state governors tend to do uh, from time to time, then the, the, the regime slaps you down, you know, the, either through a federal court ruling or through federal law or from a, an executive order from a Democrat president. We get slapped down and, and really there's no lasting victory. Now, you know, contrast this with what the left does. Now, I've long argued that the left, they've been nullifying federal law and ignoring federal court rulings for decades. I mean, just think about sanctuary cities. What, what is a sanctuary city? These sanctuary cities, which are obviously blue, you know, Democrat-run cities, they came out and said when, when the GOP was in charge, uh, you know, when there was a Republican president, um, when, when those have, have happened over the years, they come out and say, hey, we are going to nullify federal immigration law. We are going to ignore these federal court rulings, and we're going to refuse to enforce immigration law, which is, which is you know, run by the feds. It's a federal deal in the Constitution. Um, you know, the, the federal government is in charge, ostensibly, of repelling invasions of the foreign border, um, and they're in charge of setting immigration policy. That's, that's the way it's supposed to be set up under our system. And so these sanctuary cities, they just came out and said, hey, we're not going to comply. We're, we're not going to do it. We, we're, we're going to set our own policy. We're going to ignore the federal government. And of course, you know, th when these things happen from the left against the right, they're very successful because the right doesn't really push the issue. Even when we have control of the White House, even when we have control of one or both branches of Congress um, or, or, or houses of Congress, we don't, we don't fight back. We don't press the issue. We don't say no. You know, we don't pull the Andrew Jackson and say, actually, I'm going to assemble an invasion force. Uh, state of South Carolina in 1825, if you continue to nullify these tariffs, I'm going to conquer you. We don't do that on the right, but the left does that in spades. And that's why these red state governors always back down, just like Greg Abbott did. So the last time that this was really attempted from the right, you know, nullifying federal law or a federal policy, was in Arkansas, ironically, in 1957. I say ironically because it was a Democrat governor at the time, Orville Faubus, who was, um, you know, ignoring a, a federal edict uh, from then a Republican president, Dwight Eisenhower. Now, I'm a fan of Eisenhower's in, in some respects, um, you know, but, you know, th th this, what, what he did in 1957 was, you know, he sent an invasion force. You know, he, he, he sent in paratroopers from the 101st, Air, 101st Airborne Division, my old unit, um, into Little Rock, Arkansas, and he overrode Orville Faubus, who was trying to use um, the, the National Guard state authority to prevent the integration of what were then segregated schools uh, that was flying in the face of the uh, 1954 Brown v. Board of Education Supreme Court ruling um, and other federal orders. Um, they were ordering him and other southern states um, to integrate schools. And there were other states like Mississippi and others that tried for a time um, to ignore these federal rulings. But at the end of the day, as they always do, the left, the feds, you know, they use overwhelming force. Uh, they press the issue. And, you know, as always, you know, from 1957 on, um, you know, these these governors um, from, you know, what are supposedly quasi-independent states, um, they always back down. So that's that's my point is that, you know, the left is successful at this when it's coming from when, when these these nullifications are coming from the left. But the right has of now not been successful in doing so. Uh, from the right, when there's a Democrat president or someone you know who's uh, you know setting policy from the left, uh, from Washington D.C., the regime. So that's th that really that really sets the table for what happened this week. So what happened this week was uh, in the Western District of Texas, a federal jurisdiction. Um, Judge David Ezra, a Re Ronald Reagan appointee. You know everyone loves Ronald Reagan. Um, so this guy was a Reagan appointee. Um, supposed to be a conservative judge, but he came out and said uh, in his order that actually, you know, this policy, you know, Greg Abbott has, he's done a couple of okay things, like he set up these barriers in the Rio Grande. He's, he's at least pretending to try to stop these illegal immigrants. He's not stopping them. You know, if Greg Abbott wanted to stop illegal immigration, he would, but he doesn't, so he's not. Um, but, you know, he's under a lot of political pressure from the right, um, or, you know, at least enough to, to make him do something. And so he's been a little bit more aggressive recently in, you know, mobilizing National Guard units from Texas and setting up these barriers in the Rio Grande to try to repel illegal immigrants. And so this judge, you know, he, he essentially just laughed off Greg Abbott. You know, he's being sued by the DOJ, so it's in the federal jurisdiction. 
and he laughed off Abbott's arguments, you know, and the arguments from the Texas Solicitor General that Texas is under invasion. You know, apparently, you know, millions of people streaming illegally into a what is supposed to be a sovereign territory. Apparently, that's not an invasion, according to this federal judge. And so he laughed off uh, Abbott's arguments that this was a violation of Texas's sovereignty. Said that you know an invasion is not a, um, a, a I think the term he used was a judiciable uh, you know political question. Um, you know, so whatever he, you know, as these judges always do from the left, is they they try to cloak their lawmaking, um, you know, through you know through a, a constitutional um, you know sleight of hand. Um, but if you're paying attention, really, these judges are just saying like, hey, I'm setting immigration policy. Um, you know, I'm in charge. Uh, red states, you know, you can I'll, I'll pat you on the head. I'll let you do certain things. But if you fly too close to the sun, you're going to get slapped down. And so Greg Abbott, uh, you know, he responded, as, as the GOP is wont to do, with a strongly worded statement. And the statement reads, Texas will appeal. Today's court decision merely prolongs President Biden's willful refusal to acknowledge that Texas is rightfully stepping up to do the job that he should have been doing all along. This ruling is incorrect and will be overturned on appeal. We will continue to utilize every strategy to secure the border, including deploying Texas National Guard soldiers and Department of Public Safety troopers and installing strategic barriers, such as barriers in the Rio Grande. Our battle to defend Texas's sovereign authority to protect lives from the chaos caused by President Biden's open border policies has only begun. Texas is prepared to take this fight all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Wow, what a what an inspiring statement. Um, you know, Abbott is, you know, kind of swimming in the Rubicon, but not really. He's legitimizing the process, saying that we're going to appeal. We're going to go. We're going to continue doing what we always do, which is stay within the framework of the federal court system. You know, maybe the uh, Fifth Circuit or whatever circuit that Texas is in. Um, we'll overturn this on appeal, or you know, we'll take this to the Supreme Court. Well, may, where maybe uh, are you know uh, what appears to be a six-three conservative majority. Not really. It's uh, it's more like a seven-to-two liberal majority. Uh, Alito and Clarence Thomas are really the only two people who are trustworthy on that bench. Um, but he's 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 hopeful um, that the Supreme Court will allow him to erect these barriers. And once again, he's not really serious. I mean, if if Greg Abbott wanted to stop illegal immigration. He would do it, but he doesn't, so he's not. So that's kind of the lay of the land. And and I, I, on Twitter, I put out a statement that I would have that I would have issued. Uh, obviously, it would have been backed up by actions. It wouldn't, you know, I, I maybe would not have even released a statement. I would have just acted. Um, but you know, I just kind of said, well, hey, I, I quote tweeted Greg Abbott and said, well, hey, Greg, how about this? Here's my statement. Today's federal ruling presents a clear and present danger to the citizens of Texas. Therefore, we will not comply. As governor of Texas, it is my duty to defend the state from invasion. Any attempt to illegally enter the state of Texas will be met with lethal force. So, you know, why can't we, why can't we have leaders who speak like that? Why can't we have leaders who act like that? You simply say, look, as governor of Texas, I have a sacred duty to defend my sovereign territory. If the federal government is derelict in its duty to do that, then I'm going to do it, okay? Because I'm responsible not to the federal government as governor of Texas. I'm responsible to the citizens of Texas. I, I kind of like go back and forth. I would say people of Texas, but you know, some people could interpret that to, to mean everyone who's physically in Texas. Like, no, like the, the citizens of Texas, those are the people who I'm responsible for. As, as, as governor of a state, you're responsible only for, for advancing the interests of the citizens of your state. You, you, you have no obligation to advance the interests of non-citizens, a.k.a. illegal immigrants, of your, of your territory. As a matter of fact, I believe you have a sovereign, you have a, you have a duty to remove those people. Okay, You're being invaded. He, here's the thing. These red states are being invaded. It's been an invasion for a long time, really since the, the mid-1960s. You know, there have been accelerations and decelerations, but at the end of the day, this is an invasion. Okay, these red states, these red states are being invaded. 
that is what is happening. And the longer that we ignore this, you know, we, we, we've probably already reached a tipping point. I mean, I, I've, I've already made my prediction that Texas will go blue probably uh, in 2024, if not then 2026 or 2028. Um, and a lot of that is due to illegal immigration. I mean, over time, um, Texas is undergoing the same thing that happened to California. You know, California was a was a bright red state. I mean, people forget that like California was the it was the land of of Nixon and it was the home of Reagan. You know, California when it was still you know like ninety percent white, which it was back in the fifties and sixties. You know, California was a haven for people who were basically right wing. There's a lot of right wing people in California even to this day. I mean, it's a sixty forty state now. But believe me, those 40 are very engaged. They're very, I mean, there's a lot of, I had teammates on the Patriots who were from California. I mean, like there's a lot of right-wing people from California. They're just outnumbered. And, you know, other than these high concentrations uh, you know, of, of Democrats in blue areas, like, you know, downtown Los Angeles, downtown San Francisco, places like that, Palo Alto, like other than that, Silicon Valley, you know, like California is a pretty conservative place, especially in the more rural areas. I mean, you, you get a lot more, uh, activism and people who are, you know, very motivated uh, when you get away from these blue strongholds. So that's really my point: is that until we have a true Rubicon moment, and, and my argument is that a red state governor or red state leaders who just simply say enough, we are doing what the left has done, we are learning from our enemies, and we are implementing their tactics. We are saying that if you, if a federal judge or or some kind of a federal law or an executive order comes down that contravenes what I know is to be truly lawful, truly right, I'm going to ignore it. And I'm going to, um, you know, as, as, as a red state governor, I would certainly act in concert with other red states. Um, you know, other red states have kind of like had, you know, dipped their toe into sending their own National Guard troops and State Guard troops. Um, you know, DeSantis created a State Guard. You know, other states have these State Guards that are not subject to federal assumption orders. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're essentially, they're only responsible to the governor and not the president. You know, it's time to send these, to send these troops in concert with one another. Okay, you, you can't act alone or else you'll get isolated. Um, but just as these blue cities did in, in declaring themselves sanctuary cities, it's time for red states to declare themselves sanctuary states from illegal immigration. That's my argument. If you want a true Rubicon moment, this is it. So going forward... I'll, I've said it on social media before. I'll say it again. Nothing matters in politics. And, and like, really, nothing matters in politics in America until red state leaders learn from the left and begin nullifying federal law, ignoring federal court rulings, and rounding up their political opponents inside their own states. Everything else is just noise. Until next time, this is Jake Beckett. This has been The Jake Beckett Show. We'll talk to you soon.